Hey there, everybody. Before we get started, I want to do a quick unboxing of my latest book. It comes out June 6th, but they have mailed me an advanced copy here. Not mailed me. They have FedExed me. Come on, Krivy, get it right. <laughs> this book is uh, my very latest, and it is going to be a, a big one for me personally. Let's find out what it is. It's called Manga Art. Oh my goodness, look at this, guys. Look at this. Yeah! Yeah, baby! This is my first ever art uh, book, which is to say it has nothing but my artwork in it from uh, front cover to back, uh, just showing you all kinds of manga illustrations. I'm going to be doing a kind of a tour of the book uh, probably next Friday, showing you the inside of it. But I just wanted you to uh, join me uh, for the experience of opening it up and looking at it for the first time. What a thrill. All right, well, enough, enough of this, Krilly. Let's go ahead and get on with the video. Hey there, everybody. It's Mark Krilly. I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be using a dip pen uh, as my inking tool for the first time in any video, and in a way it's almost for the first time uh, in many, many years uh, since I was in college almost, the last time I used this old-fashioned traditional way uh, of inking. But people have been requesting a video about uh, inking with a dip pen for uh, many, many years. I thought, it's high time I got around to it. Now what I've got here is a pencil drawing of uh, Ken Kaneki, or Kaneki Ken, depending on uh, which uh, way you want to say the name, uh, from Tokyo Ghoul, the popular manga series by Sui Ishida. And, uh, of course, th this video is not going to be uh, showing you how to draw this character. Uh, it's also not really going to be uh, presented as a how to ink video. I don't feel like I'm qualified to teach people how to ink with a crow quill. Uh, I'm kind of reacquainting myself uh, right now uh, with the tool. I did, I sort of practiced making a few scratchy lines <laughs> earlier uh, just to make sure that I wasn't flying blind, but I'm not presenting this as me teaching you, more just uh, allowing you to join me as I kind of reacquaint myself with this drawing tool and I can kind of give you my impressions. Now you'll notice that I have not uh, taped this piece of paper uh, to the table as I very often do. Uh, this is because for me, uh, in, in inking especially, it's crucial to maintain the pivot point of the wrist. Uh, and certain lines, like over here, I need the freedom to turn the page so that uh, I'm moving the pen in a natural way. So what are my impressions thus far? You know, there's a certain kind of scratch uh, to the uh, uh, crow quill nib. I believe that's what this is called, a crow quill. Uh, as it goes, you can hear it, can't you, almost in the audio? I'll stay quiet for a second. It really does sort of scratch across the surface of the page. Now, some people will find that off-putting. Other people, I think the people who love to use the crow quill, uh, they sort of love that sound probably. You get sort of addicted to it and you maybe miss it when you don't hear it. Now I feel like I'm finally running out of ink. That was all from just one dip though, wasn't it? Um, so this idea of having to constantly keep dipping the pen into the ink, um, of course you are having to continually go back, but maybe not as frequently as you might imagine. Again, I'm going to take out this piece of paper just because I'm a little paranoid about uh, blotching or not uh, flowing the way I want it to. So I'm going to keep uh, working on this and uh, sort of telling you how I feel about it. You know, the I suppose the big advantage uh, of the traditional inking technique is the variety in thickness, like right there, that line that I just made. Um, in fact, why don't I... I'm going to zoom in right now so that we can see the individual lines a little better. All right, so I'm way close in now. I, I hope I'm ready for my close-up <laughs> as I uh, do... You know, some very thin lines here. I'm going to try to push down, maybe move a little more slowly to make a super thick line. See that? Now, not so graceful. See that little wobble? That comes with slowing down, uh, for me anyway. Once I slow down, I lose the smoothness of the line. Um, and uh, maybe the, the very skillful inkers, uh, skillful inkers can move the pen slowly and still get a thick line. Or maybe indeed they switch to a different pen uh, to get that kind of result. 
Uh, you can hear me saying the word maybe a lot because <laughs> indeed I, this is uh, slightly unfamiliar territory for me, but um, as I said, a lot of people have requested this and, and I think I'm at the stage now after 10 years of doing YouTube videos. Uh, let's let's try new things. Let's do things that I haven't done before. Let's not wait until I feel like I um, am sufficiently skilled in something that I uh, can uh, teach. Now look at that. I, I, I think I nudged it with my uh, finger there. Um, right there, you can see. And that is what happens when you're not careful. Krilly, krill dog. Even though I'm going from the left to the right, I'm going to try to conceal that error, but that, uh, that does show you I'm learning live on video. Um, you do have to be really, really careful because you could, uh, you could batch it up just by touching, especially a thick line like that that's not going to dry instantaneously. But I, I would just assume that none of these are dry until you've uh, waited a while. My apologies if the, because I am zoomed in so tightly, I probably occasionally am I'm going to ink something that is not in view. I have to keep sort of checking the uh, uh, video viewfinder thing to make sure that this is all staying within the lines. But I did want to get zoom in enough so that you could really see the individual lines. And I wonder now, if you look at actual published manga, if you will, and you look real carefully, almost with like a magnifying glass, if you will see the this line variation uh, that I'm talking about. And, and people who are really into line work, um, this is their reason maybe for using a crow quill. They just they love that uh, very subtle variation in line that you get. And who knows, maybe this is the beginning of me falling in love with the uh, uh, crow quill pen nib and maybe I'll start using it on a regular basis. Let me know if you would like uh, to see that, but <laughs> I have become very uh, used to uh, the, uh, what is it called, the micron, the pigma micron. Now, I believe that they'd make um, pens with cartridges that have this kind of crow quill uh, nib attached to them, and th that saves you from having to constantly dip the pen. But I think, uh, as I said before, you might be surprised that you're not having to constantly dip. Uh, it one One good dip of the ink does seem to sort of give you quite a number of lines before you finally have to go back to the well, so to speak. I'm a little tired of um, f being so careful about making sure this is within the frame, so I'm going to refocus back so we see a little more of the face. All right, so I've spent a lot of the most recent part of the video on uh, the hair, which is kind of a similar type of line every time I go in there. I thought I would switch now over to uh, his face, where we see uh, his very interesting uh, mask, a slightly terrifying <laughs> mask, I guess we'd have to say. Um, and uh, you can see here, I'm slowing down a little. I'm not so concerned with the uh, smooth smoothness of a really long flowing line like is required in the hair. Um, here I can maybe just sort of focus a little more on accuracy. Uh, which is to say, you know, getting the line to to be exactly where I want it to be, uh, and maybe that in itself is sort of a uh, a lesson for you that w when you're inking, you are um, sort of using not only different types of lines in different parts of the drawing, but you are laying those lines out at different speeds, depending on what uh, effect you want to get. Now, a lot of people are, you know, a lot of artists learn their inking technique in a very, um, how should I put it, uh, focused, deliberate way. For other people, all of this is a little more instinctive, you know, that they just sort of, uh, through practice, they sort of come to understand um, what lines are created by what types of stroke. I have to say, I'm, you know, I'm enjoying it. And I do, uh, my memory of how often you had to dip the pen w uh, was not accurate. I thought I had to dip much more often. 
Uh, and I don't think that that's through any matter of technology. I believe this croquill nib is, you know, maybe virtually identical to um, the nibs they were using a uh, hundred or two hundred or more years ago. It's it really is. You're talking about a very old-fashioned, tried and true technology here, uh, and I think the people who who love using a dip pen would say, look, there there was no need to improve on this technology. You know, it was good enough for people like Rembrandt. <laughs> and gosh darn it, it's good enough for me. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think in, I'm kind of enjoying this new type of uh, art tool, and maybe I'll make this a recurring thing. Krilly tries different types of art tools, whether he knows how to use them or not. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see me sort of experiment with different uh, types of things. You know, I, I think I have over the years, oh, look, that's, that's an example of, uh, it, it already seemed to be actually stopping, you know, not making any lines. So now I do have to go back to the uh, inkwell here. Um, I have been sort of uh, holding myself to the standard of thinking, well, I can't teach anything that I myself do not consider myself uh, well versed in. But maybe I can let up on that and say, hey, you know, this is not a how-to video. This is just, uh, watch me draw. Hear me gab <laughs> about things. And, uh, you know, it's certainly entirely possible that some of the people watching this video, many of the people watching this video, uh, know more about this kind of croquil inking than I do. But, uh, yeah, in the interest of doing new things, uh, I, uh, I, I think I will allow myself to do more of this type of video. Whoop, look at that. Oh, it's already starting to run. Sometimes it just sort of stops flowing. Even though you dipped it uh, fairly recently, I wonder if it sort of dries a little. Uh, now I'm back to the this uh, hair stuff, and that, of course, requires, for me, really fast movements. Uh, of the pen once again. I thought one other thing that I was going to do, and I think I will zoom back in again to show you this, is a little bit of cross hatching. All right, so I have done uh, videos on cross hatching um, uh, in the past, and I will link um, to the one that is like exclusively devoted to it. But why not do a little here? And since I'm zoomed in, you can hopefully see each individual line. Now everybody comes up with their own way of cross hatching. And my approach is to do uh, just a number of lines in one direction and then to cross at uh, a very slight angle. You see the angle that I'm crossing over is not in a, uh, you know, perpendicular kind of a way or 90 degree angle way. Uh, I'm trying to cross each set of lines in a more subtle way. I hope I'm getting this right, that as I looked at illustrations of uh, Ken Kaneki's mask, it seemed that there is basically no eye socket at all over here. Uh, if I have blundered and left out an eye socket, let me know. But uh, it's, it's a very cool mask design. And some of you may be wondering, Mark, does this mean that you read uh, or have read the complete Tokyo Ghoul manga? <laughs> Sadly, no, it does not mean that, but uh, I've admired the illustrations, that's for sure. Uh, and this uh, mask design in particular, I think, is just genius. You know, it really is, is a bold, uh, interesting design that is unlike anything I've seen in any other uh, comic. I'm trying to decide if I should go in even more trying to be a little tentative here with this cross hatching. I suppose one thing that I could talk about in terms of cross hatching is how many times do you layer uh, over something before you say, hey, it's time to stop uh, muddying the waters. Like up here, uh, we have maybe two layers of lines, uh, especially right now, that would be two layers. I might give myself the, uh, a third layer before I start becoming a little hesitant about darkening it any further. You can keep going, basically, until it becomes black. Oh, I'm running out of ink again. After I do all that talk about, hey, you don't have to dip it that often, and suddenly I'm having to <laughs> dip it every five seconds. <laughs> Man.
Man, I guess you do have to dip it pretty often. Uh, but there, there's a little bit there on uh, cross hatching. I wonder if I can do one more type of. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about um, doing the more detailed line work. Um, and I don't want to assume that everybody knows this, but you know, the harder you press down on the pen, the uh, thicker the line gets. The more, the less pressure you put on it, the more you let up. The thinner the line gets. And also, I think there's sort of a golden time when the um, the nib is sort of half running out of ink, but has not completely run out of ink. And then you get these very thin, spidery lines. And I think the people who are uh, experts, they become very aware of uh, that sort of window of opportunity when it's sort of drying a little. There's another that I did. I don't know, it came off. <laughs> I thought I'd made another huge blunder, but I was lucky. Um, so yeah, the, if you if you keep at it and you pay attention to how the thing is gradually uh, drying, you you can get super uh, super thin lines. Like right down here, I'm going to try now that I sort of feel like it's running out of ink. See how thin those lines get? Uh, it's p partly to do with me, or maybe mostly to do with me letting up the pressure. Whereas if I l go in real thick, right, and uh, again, there's a little bit of a wobble to that line because I moved slowly at first. But pushing down hard, that's what creates the thick line. Uh, and uh, letting up uh, makes it thinner. That, that sounds like a kind of obvious uh, principle, but in a way, uh, so much of inking depends on your understanding of that. Um, and becoming familiar, you know, I feel like when you are pressing down, you inevitably get a different, not just thickness of line, but quality of line. And uh, so the, the master inker becomes good at both of those types of lines, can do a really thick line slowly, but also very smoothly, which I'm not so good at, uh, and then can do the thin spidery lines. Which I think, you know, when things are going well, I can do a pretty good uh, super thin line quickly. Uh, it's almost like the, the pen nib itself helps you achieve that. I am finding periodically that I think I've got a fully uh, inked nib, and I don't. I wonder if I'm not just uh, putting it in deeply enough. But you see me again and again going back to the scratch paper. I don't want to commit any lines to the page um, before I'm really sure of what kind of line I'm going to get. I wonder if the more experienced inkers don't need to do that anymore, um, which is to say they don't need to have that spare piece of paper nearby and uh, they don't need to constantly be verifying. Now here where it's round, this is where I get a little nervous. It becomes a very tight place where you want a smooth line. But it's not the pivot of the wrist, you know, you're just sort of doing your best to uh, dash in a, a, a tight curving line. This is more challenging, I must say, for me. You see how that one kind of went off? <laughs> the uh, Because I'm trying to, I, I want that smoothness, but I'm, I'm sacrificing accuracy. So anyway, um, you know, in a way, that, that may be the benefit of a video like this, where I don't hold myself to being Mr. Teacher Guy. As you can see, uh, some of the clumsiness, some of the mistakes, and um, that uh, is probably helpful, really, to see, you know. No matter how many years you've been working at something, when you grab an unfamiliar or a fairly unfamiliar tool for the first time in many years, um, you're going to see some clumsy uh, inking work. Whoops. And nothing came out of the nib. Maybe I'll try one where I get one of the ones that have the cartridges, where I don't have to keep uh, dipping the uh, nib. But I think I'm probably reaching the end of what I have to say about this technique, and maybe it is time for me just to kick it into time-lapse. Bring in old man time-lapse uh, with his old crow quill <laughs> powers, and he's going to help me finish this off in uh, uh, super fast time so that we can wrap up this video with a few final words.
All right, well, there's the finished product. Uh, one thing I noticed uh, when I used my kneaded eraser to get rid of the pencil lines, this ink holds up really well. Very little of it gets erased away. Uh, and there's a noticeable difference, I think, when you're using art pens. This is probably superior in terms of the ink uh, gripping to the page, this old-fashioned traditional method. And so that's probably why many people, among many other reasons, uh, continue to swear by this old-fashioned method. I want to make sure, though, that I thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books like Brody's Ghost, my graphic novel series. We've got The Realism Challenge, my book on hyper-realistic illustrations. The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. And my very latest book, well, my second to latest book, I guess I'd have to say now, Mastering Manga 3. I really am super, super grateful to anyone who supports me by getting any of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this Crowquill pen. That's a first in the history of Mark Curley videos. I, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I enjoyed making it for you, and I'll be back with another one real soon.